You should know very well by now that the Airsoft minigun is one of the most cherished dream guns for so many airsofters out there. Just the novelty of such a ridiculous and eye-catching gun like the M134 is would be enough for any newcomer to the hobby. But there's just one small problem with that dream. They normally cost around $3,500 to $4,000. Yeah, Airsoft is expensive, yo, so when we can, we look at the alternatives. I might dream about owning a Ferrari F40, a Lamborghini Countach, an A9 GTR, or a replica of the Brian O'Connor FNF Supra, but until the day I can afford any of those dreams, I'll just have to look at the alternatives. But now there's a cheaper alternative to the fabled minigun. Yes, a cheaper minigun, and it's less than $1,000. Don't give me that look. Okay, let's put away the toys and pull out a different toy. This is the new Classic Army M132 Micro Gun, a mini mini gun if you will. Thanks to GI Tactical in Plano, Texas, I was able to get my hands on this pre-sample before it was released, but now that it's out on the market for anyone to drop $700 on, I can now link it in the description down below. So go ahead and take a look at these on the Airsoft GI website if you're interested. But now back to this little four-barreled bundle of super hype, I can now state that I don't have the original box that these would ship with. So there's no real unboxing for this video, but that does mean that I can get straight to the gun itself. Starting off, the microgun or M132 weighs in at about 7 to 8 pounds, while I think the normal M134 came in at about 40 pounds loaded. This massive weight drop is due to the mostly nylon fiber construction of this rotary gun. You can just about speed soft with this if that's something you want to do. Even if you're hindered, you can still use this one-handed. Just about everything you see here that's black is made from nylon fiber besides the four metal barrels. Even the spacers that hold the barrels together and orange tips are plastic, and they can be pulled right off the outer barrels, oddly. But this could just be true for this pre-sample. But you're not going to want to pull these orange tips off because they act like spacers for the inner barrels to stay centered inside the outer barrel. The build construction is one of the key factors to keeping the microgun cheap, but there are a couple cut corners in my opinion that were a result to this, which I'll cover later. For now, let's talk about the internal magazine that, once again, in my opinion, is quite ingenious. To fill the microgun with your preferred BBs, you have to unscrew this portion away from the center of the barrel cluster, and bam, you can remove the slinky follower as I call it. This follower will put constant pressure on the load of BBs you insert down into the internal magazine, and this magazine will eat up about 2,000 rounds per fill, and you're going to finish that up fast playing with this, so bring extra ammo for sure. Maybe about $80 worth of ammo, which is the amount we spent in one day playing with this gun at D14. Thanks to the slinky follower, you can fire the microgun at any angle as well, without needing to shake the whole gun like older minigun replicas. So this whole setup is very well thought out. When it comes to powering the microgun, you'll have two options. The smart way and the super expensive way. The latter of those being by green gas. Yep. Throw a green gas bottle in here and link the inline hose to the metal tip and you can power this 20 round a second mini mini gun. Yeah, that doesn't sound very smart at all. And that's if you don't make the 38 round a second high speed motor upgrade that's coming for the micro gun soon. Do you realize just how much you're going to spend if you run this thing on green gas? At least here in the flag on the moon land, aka America, we don't have the right size bottles to fit in this little closet. So that leaves us with high pressure air. This makes more sense to use, but will also cost you a pretty penny to run it this way. Since after one good skirmish game at the recommended pressure of 110 psi, you're probably going to be out of air completely. So either way, this is not a cheap gun to run. Both ammo and air will cost you a bit if you want to run this gun, but if you think about what you're dumping on the field to legitimately scare other players away, then it might be worth it. This is one of the very few airsoft guns that can actually instill fear into other players in a game because to them it's a minigun that's going to smash them with a cloud of BBs unless they fall back. But only if they knew the poor range a microgun owner will have, even with all the hop-ups adjusted. Yeah, this gun does have hop-up, four of them actually, and they can be adjusted for each barrel after removing this cover. You'll need a 1.5 sized Allen wrench to adjust these, but don't expect to really reach out and compete against the diehard sniper builders and DMR builders. Because when I tested this with 0.28 gram BBs and 0.32 gram BBs, I only saw 150 foot shots. And those are with all the AEG barrels inside, so maybe with some mods you'll get some better range, but that's gonna be pricey. And none of those 150 foot shots were at all precise. But maybe I'm thinking about this too much, because this gun is clearly meant for heavy suppressive fire to intimidate other players. But when range is poor, range is poor. But hey, if you want to use this on a vehicle for support, then you should know that spade grips and vehicle mounts will be coming out soon. That can be put on pretty easily after you unscrew a few allen wrench screws. You'll actually find a lot of allen screws on here, because they hold on the grips and the barrel cluster. Almost done now, I can show you where the battery goes, which should be on the right side in this tube. But be sure to use an 11.1 LiPo battery. 
This will rotate the barrels and chamber BBs, but without any pressurized air to fire those BBs, they will freely roll out of the barrels, so be aware of that. Classic Army is really stressing that you don't underpower this gun so you can avoid jamming and damages. So that's going to be another thing you're going to want to have if you don't have already. Get 11.1 LiPo batteries. But if you do like to run Dean's connections on your batteries, then just remove this small type connector on the end of this plug and you'll get Dean's connections. They're right there. Once the battery is in and you're ready to fire, just grip the handle to press down the grip safety and pull the trigger back. However, do this quickly so you don't waste air because holding the trigger back slightly will cause air to leak until you fully pull it back. That's just something I thought you should know. And you get all of this while still being shorter than a standard AKM. But now for the major flaw that killed this gun for me, the inline hose. Are you even surprised that I broke this while reviewing this gun? I guess after a solid day of play, this thin rubber straw couldn't handle it and it ripped away from the gun, but honestly, I expected this. Eventually, this would bend and kink until it broke off anyway. It's just too weak. And to the techs that saw this broken piece, they firmly agreed. But I'm not going to be the one to complain and not offer a solution. How about a braided hose or just a metal direct connection? Sure, you might need a longer line to your tank, but still. For an extra $10 or so, I can save a $700 investment, so that's how I look at it. But with this review, what do you think about the microgun? Is it worth $700? Bear in mind, this is supposed to be the cheaper version of a gun that's worth most high schoolers' first car, but does that legitimize the price tag? If you really broke it down, this is a $200 gun that has a $500 HPA engine in it. But despite all the flaws I mentioned, this is probably the coolest thing I've ever reviewed. I've never had so much fun reviewing an airsoft gun before until I got this in my hands. So in my eyes, I'd say that this is totally worth it, but I'd get that hose replaced as soon as I could. Yeah, the range may be poor, even with heavier BBs, and the cost to run a microgun may be out of some people's reach, but it's still what it is, a mini minigun. The classic army microgun. But I hope you enjoyed my review of the M132 microgun, and I hope that you show me your appreciation with a like down below or a great comment. I like to read all of them, so I'll see what you have to say. Also check out the links for my extended video of the shooting of the microgun so you can enjoy the stuff me and my friends were able to do while we were at D14 a few weeks ago. And don't forget about the link to airsoftgi.com where you can get one of these for yourself. But until our next video drops from the city of San Antonio, this has been Scott Hollenbeck and I'll be sure to see you all next time. You went in the white building.
Oh, my God. 